Hello everyone and welcome back to the New Hampshire Business Show. My name is Chris Pastrana and today we're here with Dahlia Rizek of Buckle Me Baby Goats. Hi. How's it going? Good, how are you? Fantastic. So talk to me a little bit about yourself and then we'll jump into the business. So I am a mental health counselor here in uh, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. I have a business that I co-own with my friend Kelly Parsons called Choices Counseling in Londonderry. Um, and in the process of growing my business and raising my kids, I realized that car seats and coats don't mix. You're supposed to take the coats off when you get in the car seat, which okay. was really hard with as busy as I have been. Um, so I came up with a different way. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to take it you have kids. I have kids. I have three kids. Uh, the oldest is actually turning 20 in a couple of months. Oh, wow. I have a 15-year-old who will be turning 16 uh, next week, and then I have a 10-year-old. Okay. So... I have four, so I mean I'm familiar with kids as well. So I'm assuming after having a few, you've noticed you noticed the issue was kind of where it came from. I actually noticed it when my oldest. Uh, I thought of it when my oldest was really young. Um, at the time, though, I was in the middle of grad school and the internet wasn't a thing, so I had no real way to reach an audience. I talked to a bunch of different coat companies, uh, coat manufacturers, everyone that you could possibly think of, and they all didn't really think that coats and car seats were things that even had a problem with one another, that coats needed to be redesigned. So I had yeah. to kind of go back to the drawing board. But as the kids grew older and social media became uh, the big thing that it is now, and yeah. I see parents in the in the parking lots, you know, struggling with blankets and looking miserable and, and totally upset. I'm like, there's a better way. So last year, I'm hmm. like, you know what, let me just give it a try, put it out there on social media, see if it has any traction, and, and here I am. That's pretty good. Yeah, it went fast. Yeah, so you said you've been for a year now? Yeah, a little over a year. Okay, so in that year, you went from, oh, so I think a better question, uh, did you design and build all these yourself? Yes, so I designed it um, on a kitchen table napkin, actually, and then I found a prototype maker in Boston, uh, Roger Hines, and he uh, took some materials and he made the first coat for me. Okay. Um, and I took that first coat up to Michigan where I crash tested it just to see if it works the way that I think it should work. And it, yeah. I had kind of, I'm, t I like, I'm a planner, so I had a plan A, B, C, D, E, all the way through yeah. Z. And it worked the very first time, which I was super excited about. Um, and then I thought, you know what, let me put it online. I took some videos of my nephew in his car seat and let me see what happens. And it just blew up. Like I was getting messages from people saying, where can we buy one? I know you said they're not for sale yet, but really want one. And I only had the one. So yeah. this last year was really just scrambling, trying to find manufacturing and getting that all squared away. Okay. And then um, take it, you went and found people that could actually make them yes. in bulk? Yes. Or something? Yeah, I was making it originally in Massachusetts. It was really way too expensive. Yeah. I broke even the first year. I moved production overseas for part of it. Um, mm -hmm. I now have two lines of co coats, a hoodless coat and a hooded coat. Okay. Uh, the hooded coats I'm going to continue to make in the U.S. I do like to support local. Um, but the hoodless coats are being made overseas. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting. So, out of all the businesses I've had on the show, I don't get a lot of like, people who want to come up with their own designs and then figure out the whole manufacturing part of it. So this is actually really neat and interesting. I like that. It, it was super <laughs> funny because when I was, I told, I, like I said, I, I'm a planner. And when I was thinking of all the things that are going to be hard, the hard things were so easy. Yeah. Like the crash testing and gaining an audience. Those are the things I thought were going to be hard. <laughs> and it was the things that I thought that were going to be easy, like the manufacturing that has been nothing but complicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So the actual building and designing and all that stuff. Just finding a production yeah. partner who is huh. reliable, has, yeah. you know, yeah. consistent, uh, good output, but also is reputable. I'm not going to be manufacturing a coat for kids here at the expense of a child overseas who's under slave labor or you know his mother's being exploited or something like yeah. that so th there's a balancing act there yeah hmm, interesting yeah so I, i'll get into that one later because the overseas <laughs> question is very interesting yeah um because that's happening a lot nowadays i think companies are it's starting to move yeah it's too expensive when i was shopping around for prices um you know when you have something made here you're you're only paying for the cut and sew meaning they don't give you the whole product you have to buy the uh buttons, the snaps, the Velcro, the materials, you have to provide all those things and cover shipping. Yeah. So they give you a price and it's only for the cut and sew. And I got prices just to cut and sew it between 50 to $150 to have it made here. 
Yeah, is that per coat? Per coat. Oh, wow. So if I'm cutting and sewing it for 150 minus materials, yeah, what am I going to sell it for? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean. So people go overseas. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow, it's <laughs> pretty cool. So let's talk a little bit about the product itself. Sure. Um, so you had mentioned that there was an issue with your, how the children plus the jackets fit into the car seats. So yes. how is this addressing that? How it addresses it. Yeah. So you know kind of to back up a little bit the essential issue is the american academy of Pediat pediatrics and the nhtsa both say take coats off yeah because when you put the coat on and you put the harness on top of it you could pull that harness as tight as you think you can but really it adds it adds up to six inches of space underneath uh it may not look like it but when you're in a car crash the force of the crash compresses that material so much that yeah. it throws the child forward and what the studies show is that up to six millimeters of forward movement can uh, add to your risk of critical injury in your brain, neck, and spine. Six millimeters. Okay. But the puffiness of the coat can add up to four inches of space. So there's a big mismatch, and that's why you're supposed to take it off. But of course, as a parent, you know that's not a fun task. It's yeah. hard to get the coat on the first time, yeah. let alone several and other times And it's cold. And, and it's so cold, yeah. and the kid's having a meltdown, and you just want to <laughs> keep going. And it's not like you only have one stop anyway. You've got a lot of stops. So the way my coat works is instead of opening in the middle, it opens along the shoulder seams, which is set back here, mm -hmm. and along the side. So you could pull the whole front panel out of the way, leaving no fabric on the shoulder or on the chest, and then the harness sits right where it's supposed to. Um, the back is a little thinner than the front, so you can actually set the harness with no coat on, and then use the coat without resetting the harness at all. So oh. you're keeping the child as close to the car seat as you can. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You want to see one? Yeah, absolutely. I was about to ask if you had brought one in. <laughs> I brought a couple. So this is how it works. If you want to hold it up, I can hold it up. That's fine. I'll just yeah. tilt it down a little bit so you can see. Yeah. So you can see if you open it along the shoulder seams and the side. When you, It's kind of hard to tell the shoulder seams are set back without a child. Yeah. But when you have a child in this, this is set far back here. So okay. the harness sits right on their shoulder and right on their chest. There's nothing in the way. If you have a little Houdini, you can cover it up so that <laughs> they don't play with the buckles. And yeah. if you have an overheater, you can also just roll it up to the side and then they can't. I like you have names for the types of children. <laughs> As everybody are, it's like, that little thing is Houdini. It's just going to vanish from the car seat the minute you put it in there. <laughs> you have to make it fun. I actually, when I was loading the coats onto my website, I'm like, I'm going to give these coats names. Because I was like, car seat coat, car seat. So this is I Lava You. All the coats have names. Yeah. Uh, just, I want it to be a little bit fun. That's funny. Yeah. Oh, man. Because my daughter, she's probably a mix of an overheater and like a Houdini. A Houdini, yeah. Like, so she's just a terror to... <laughs> Put in there. You could teach her to do it herself. <laughs> Here, honey, call it, cover it up. It's time to cover up. Yeah. It's time to pull it aside. That's funny. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. And it seems like a very simple alteration to the design of the coat that solved a pretty big problem. Yeah, it is. Actually, the day I thought of it, I was, you know, trying to get my daughter in. I had taken her coat off. She didn't want to take her coat off. And I was just sitting at the steering wheel feeling frustrated. You have this kind of meltdown parent moment. And I was just like, ah. And, and I was like, oh. If the zipper wasn't in the middle, this wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. And then as I calmed down, I'm like, if the zipper wasn't in the middle, this wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of how it came about. That's really cool. And I, I see this a lot in the entrepreneurial field. Like, some of the, most of the ideas and all the products come from someone who had a, a problem. Yeah. And they figure out how to fix it, and then it blows up into an industry. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really cool to see. <laughs> it's yeah. been fun. Yeah. That's really cool. So, Thank you. So the jackets, I'm assuming uh, they're just as efficient as a normal jacket as far as keeping the kid warm? Yes, uh, they are. I don't have access to um, temperature ratings, but I did do something really cool. Uh, well, we've been selling them for about a year, and I've had parents test them mm -hmm. out in Canada, negative 40 degree weather. They all say it's great, but I like numbers. Yeah. And so I got this little heat gun from Black & Decker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I got a... Um, a sleeping bag that has temperature ratings on it okay and then I got dry ice and oh, so what cool. I did is I put the dry ice in the sleeping bag and used the heat gun to measure the temperature loss mm -hmm. at uh, one minute five minutes ten minutes twenty minutes and then I did the same on my coat and my coat one that's pretty cool yeah it was fun that would be a good like video to do if you ever I know I want to redo it like <laughs> make it like a nice little production video and yeah like, it's a pretty good coat yeah <laughs> it's warm I promise <laughs> that's pretty funny um, so 
I'm assuming, so you manufacture partly here, partly overseas, but I'm assuming you have clients, a sense of people that would buy it all over the country? I have had them all over the country. I've had them from Canada. I don't really have it open to Europe yet per se, but I've yeah. had people message me and say, hey, we really like it and we live in Finland and we live in Australia. And I'm like, if you want to pay the shipping, it's up to you. I don't have the distribution. And they have, so. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. So it seems like it's got a lot of forward momentum there. Like It's, it's been gonna moving. It's going to be pretty good. Yeah, it's been moving. It's a double-edged sword because on one hand, it's moving, which is what you want in a new yeah. business. But on the other hand, I'm like, oh, my life. What happened? Yeah, you need to figure <laughs> out how to yeah. make all of that work. That's the next step. I need yeah. to start having a little bit more help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is, is this just you? Just me. Oh, wow. So you're doing a lot yourself? Yeah. The website is me. The uh, Facebook is me. <laughs> Uh, pick packing and sorting would be me. Yeah. Customer service still me. That's hysterical. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah, that's definitely. I need a team. With the, yeah, I was gonna say with the rate you're growing now is that time where you start delegating and branching your company into a more formal structure. I'm at that. See that. I'm at that point. That's gonna be this year's. <laughs> that's gonna be this that's, year's plan. <laughs> yeah. You know, because like I said, it, it seems like it's got a lot of potential. It's gonna move really well. Um, Thank you. And. Yeah, you also don't want to take on a multi-billion dollar company, you know, by yourself, because you'll never sleep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sleep is good. Yeah. So, you know, especially, like, with yourself, you have a family. Yeah. You know, you, you build a little side business like this, and it takes off, and you do well, and you're like, oh, no, now i got to figure out how to balance that with them. And yeah. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> that has been, that was something that I was working on last year, and I just found that I have to be careful about how I chunk my time. Something yeah. like this, it's so easy that it spills over into everything. Mm -hmm. And so you have to kind of say to yourself, no, self, this time we're spending with family, everything is off and everything else can wait and it'll be okay. And then you go back to it and you just hustle. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Like that. I was going to say, you have kids, free labor. <laughs> <laughs> you would think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they do help me with the shipping. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you're even there, like, so does your manufacturers just send you all of your product and oh, then yeah. you sit in your you house, package pick, it, and... Pick, pack, and sort it, and oh, send it right out. <laughs> oh, man, that's that's a ton of work. Because I've, I've seen work. people that have to do that, and even on a smaller smaller scale with just custom t-shirts, yeah. like that, that's a lot of work. I know, people keep saying I should add things to my line, and I'm like, do you know how much work it is just to ship <laughs> out six coats? I'm going to keep it simple. Yeah. I can't imagine if each customer wanted like 15 different things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is too funny. That's pretty good. Yeah. So how do you like operating out in New Hampshire? Um, I mean, it's been fine. I don't really know what it's like to operate somewhere else to kind of compare. Yeah, except uh, Mass, I guess. I've never really operated. <laughs> no, you just did the just, manufacturing. Just, yeah, well, yes, we were just doing manufacturing okay. there, but that's switched over. Yeah. Um, so it's always been out of New Hampshire, and it's been easy. You know, post office, I come in with tons of coats, and they don't give me the hairy eyeball. Yeah. <laughs> They're very nice. That's good. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Mm, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. So where are you looking to take everything? Well, I'd like to reach more parents, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact is that cars, the regular coats are unsafe, and there are a lot of parents who still don't know. So, uh, you know, aside from building out a team and, and making it a little bit more efficient, um, I'm just looking at this point to reach more parents and let them know, hey, there is, this is a problem. It is a, an important problem, and there are solutions for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I like that. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, is there anything you wanted to go over kind of by yourself? I think that really you covered almost everything. Really? I mean, it's a pretty <laughs> streamlined good. business. Yeah. I sell coats. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. So, I guess this is a good question. If you figure out the rest of it and you figure out the delegation, you free up some time, what type of stuff would you add to the product lines? I'd like to add hats and mittens. Okay. Maybe snow pants uh, would be nice. Boots, you know, just a whole complete winter winter uh, set that would be, you know, vertical, horizontally. I'd like to add, um, you know, things that are uh, car seat safe. Or just safe in general for children. You know, okay. as a parent, it's hard to wade through a lot of the information, and things that you think are safe are actually not safe. Mm -hmm. um, not in a the sky is falling chicken little way. Yeah. But in a just let's prevent the preventable. You know, it's not about helicopter parenting. It's about why run a risk when you don't need to. Yeah. And there are things that you don't think of. You know, for example, uh, some of the aftermarket products that you c use in a car seat, you think they're totally okay, like the sheepskin Sherpa things that you could put on a, a the harness. Mm -hmm. They're very un they're very dangerous. 
mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm. So what, well, what can parents do instead when their child's head kind of bobs forward or, or stuff like that? So creating space for those kind of dialogues, but still at the same time maintaining the safety factor. Because a lot of companies will just push something out and say, here's a product and it's going to solve your problem. And you assume if it says crash tested, it's safe. Um, but it's not necessarily safe. And, and that's something that as I, as I was walking through, you know, putting Buckley baby coats together, I kind of ran that line because I could have just said, hey, it's crash tested, it's safe. Um, but that's not what I wanted. Yeah. And so I approached uh, CPSTs in New Hampshire. Uh, the woman who runs the CPST program in New Hampshire, her name is Julie Dietrich. And Vinnie Caruso, who runs it out of Londonderry, were really fantastic to me. And I said, hey, I have this code. I crash tested it, um, crash tested beautifully, but I'd like more opinions. Um, they helped me have fire uh, first responders look at it, EMTs look at it. They looked at it themselves. Um, the original iteration of the coat actually had uh, a hood. And mm-hmm. they said, we're 100% behind you. This coat works great, but you have to lose the hood. And that's why the code has no hood. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's about, you know, kind of getting that piece that, it, you know, yes, it, it meets the marketing needs in order mm-hmm. to market it to parents, but is it really safe? And then moving that into other products, too. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So what was it about the hood that was the issue? So it falls behind the back. Okay. And it'll create space. You know, again, okay. when you yeah, measure risk of in- injury, you're measuring millimeters. So you might think, well, the hood's falling behind. What's the big deal? It's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can see that now you say it. When I did the crash testing um, up in Michigan, it was actually super interesting. First of all, the sled that they use for the crash test is the same sled they used for G-force testing for mm-hmm. the military way back when. Yeah. But when the test crashes the uh, when the sled crashes into the uh, part that stops it it's like it's air uh, the f- amount of space that the car seat actually moves forward in the way that it's designed to as a parent is scary yeah so if you forget about this is improperly secured the child isn't harnessed correctly but how much it's actually supposed to move by itself yeah is scary just to look at yeah yeah hmm that's pretty cool I have to check that out. It's creepy. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. That's very cool. So people that want to learn a little more, uh, get in touch with you, how do they find you? Buckle Me Baby Coats. We're on Facebook um, at Buckle Me Baby Coats. I have a website. It's BuckleMeCoats.com, and we're on Instagram as well. That's awesome. Yes. So thank you so much for joining me today. This has been awesome. Thank you for having me. It's nice meeting you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we have a new up-and-coming company. It's fantastic. I love seeing it. So everyone be good. Have a great day.